I first heard about broccoli sprouts six years ago and at the time I wasn't particularly interested in eating them. They looked like little green pubic hairs is the most polite way of saying what they look like. <laughs> Can what you do as an individual have a positive impact on the world? Is this even possible? Well, that's what this film is trying to answer. So keep watching to get inspired by Harold's story. I was looking for ways to contribute more to my community, specifically their health. The idea hit me. Why don't we grow broccoli sprouts and why don't we deliver them to people's doors like a milkman? So the problem statement is you're wasting a lot of money. You're wasting a hell of a lot of money on your health. Can I say, I'm just a bit, I'm cringing a bit because I don't want to be another health guru telling people, you know. Why would we question the quality of tomatoes we buy in the shop for three euros, but not the quality of protein or multivitamin we spend 50 euros on? My name is Robin Donahov and I'm traveling the world to make 100 films about 100 humans who are making the planet a better place, all while sharing the process with you on this channel. So this is a huge task and if you want to follow along on this journey, make sure you subscribe right now. And now let's watch film number 100, the first of this series. Harold, take it away. She sells seashells on the seashore. Broccoli sprouts are the manifestation, if you will, of many of my values when it comes to health, both for the planet and for humans. I think if you were to bottle up everything I care about when it comes to health, I think sprouts would emerge out of this bottle, this genie bottle. So I can tell you straight away, I'm not gonna get rich by this. And the reason is very simple. By definition, this isn't about scale. My hope is that we have a sustainable small business. My name is Harold and we are in Wicklow Island. Good morning Greystones. A beautiful place just outside of Dublin, near the sea, near the mountains. You can hear the birds. It's a special place. This is quite a famous place in Ireland for starting sea swimming. Eight years ago, two people came down and now we'll see. It's 5.30 a.m. there's about 20 people here. Cold swimming at 5 a.m. might not exactly be my cup of tea, but let me tell you, there is a lot more going on here in Greystones. Right. Are you ready for swimming? I don't think you're ever ready, especially in the morning. Like The last thing you want to do is get into that cold <laughs> yeah. water, but uh, I know how good I feel afterwards. And yeah. it's kind of a ritual that happens day in, day out, that you don't want to get in, and then you come in and go, it's wonderful. <laughs> well, I guess I've done it enough that my body knows. Very refreshing, but my feet are killing me right now. Why am I here? I suppose I'd have to take you back to the UK. I, like many people living just outside of London, spent my childhood wanting to get to London for the universities, for the jobs, for the opportunities, the excitement, the pop culture, the clubs. Like many people of my generation, didn't know what I was gonna do in life. Because when you're in a fast paced city, you're just trying to not survive, but you're trying to just operate and figure out how to live and save money and find a job. So an opportunity came up in Dublin. I'd never been to Dublin. And before I knew it, I was flying over, having done an interview and nervously excited to try this job. Coming up already, are you? I was from London, or I lived in London, and I thought it was the centre of the universe. I land in Dublin, an amazing city full of history, full of complicated history with my country, which I felt a lot of shame over. And I felt a need to quickly forget about my London identity and learn a brand new way of life and not take for granted that just because we speak, <laughs> we speak English here and because we have maybe some similar products or favorite musicians, it's a completely and utterly beautiful culture that deserves respect and deserves to be really focused on. Hard to articulate, yeah. very enlivening, enlivening. 
emptying, cleansing, invading in gratitude. Do you ever feel stuck with the choices you've made in your life? Or maybe someone else made them for you? Well, that's how I lived a major part of my life. And if this is the case for you too, then hopefully Harold's story can provide a glimpse of inspiration for you to start changing it. We thought we had come to Greystones to make a film about Harold and his sprouts, but it turned out to be so much more. This is a story about happiness, health, community, and a way of approaching life. And how you can have a positive impact on our home planet at the same time. I think I'm working for an immediate world that I'd be excited for my son to grow up in. And I think that starts with the health of my community, the health of my family, hopefully works outwards. When I grew up, being healthy was not cool. It was about going out, partying, drinking. If you went to the gym, you wouldn't tell people about it. If you had a good body, you didn't want people to know you worked hard for it. Now, across many industries, health is the main reason people are selling that should be a good thing. The fundamental benefit to ourselves should be a main reason for buying something, right? Where the problem arises is what's actually healthy and what's just something I've bought and told myself was for my spiritual, physical, emotional health, when actually I just consumed something and made a company more money. Listen to your breath for one minute. You can close your eyes if you want, you don't have to. And stay there for one minute, we'll do the ball sport. So just connect with your breathing. How I ended up here in Greystones, a small town outside of Dublin, was probably, plainly put, the pandemic. So like many people, I was very lonely, very disconnected from the world. I lived in a small flat in the center of Dublin and I was craving community, craving access to nature. And ironically, as I was leaving Dublin, a friend came to my leaving party. It was a brief moment when we were allowed outside of lockdown. So they said, oh, there's a room going in Greystones, this town I knew very well and I had friends in and was near the beach, near the mountains, great community. Three months, are you interested? And I said, sure. So I flew back to London. I'm coming to London. For a month, my friends who hadn't seen me for four and a half years properly were like, hey, welcome back. Da, da, da. And like that scene in Love Actually, I said, I'm actually going back. Sorry. Man's got to do what a man's got to do. Oh, I hate Uncle Jamie. They looked to me, my friends, after I just returned and said, like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, you can finally be back in London, your city. We're going to get some coffee. Well, I'm rash, huh? So stayed in London for a couple of months, went straight to Greystones, landed, went down to the beach, which is like the place where everyone meets. And before I knew it, all my friends were 15 years older than me, 10, 10 15 years older than me, opened their hearts and their minds to me. I learned so much from my friends. I'm so grateful for how they welcomed me and how they didn't judge me or wonder what I was doing here. All they saw was someone on the beach. They welcomed me, gave me tea after my swim. And the rest is, the rest is history, yeah. After the morning swim, everyone on the beach was invited to the Happy Pear Cafe for breathwork and coffee. Yeah, and just Americano, is it? Yes. Ooh, nice! The bakery in the next room was in full operation and I literally got to break bread straight from the oven with these people I had known for about five minutes. It was a beautiful moment and it filled me with feelings of comfort and easiness. Could this sort of shared experience be one of the keys to a happier, healthier life? I think we have become seduced by the marketing messages of health supplements, abs, strong bodies, longer lives and forgotten to hold not only the companies but ourselves accountable to whether this actually is health promoting and whether we actually agree with what we're consuming. And I want to ask us why? Why are we not asking more of ourselves and the companies we give money to? The average person in the UK spends up to 800 to a thousand pounds 
on supplements per year, but probably never thinks about making their own. Boom. So we're just trying to really communicate and, and have fun with educating people and ourselves about the deeper value of plants. In fact, you could say we're educating people. I've worked in the health and nutrition space for several years, but it wasn't until I saw the products that my mum and dad were being told to buy by health professionals that I became seriously invested in rectifying this. Seeing my parents buy products that promised health when they arguably were doing the opposite made me want to change it. Some people still understandably are not ready to put the physical sprout on their spaghetti on their pizza so what we do with the capsule is create practicality but we also create efficiency by reducing 90 percent of the water weight there's an easy solution information empowerment and letting people do the rest I think we're heading to the Happy Pear Farm. Is that right? That's or... correct. We obviously yeah. do it in partnership with them and I'm very grateful that we're friends because they are very supportive on many levels and they give me great advice and they're just, they're just good people. I had no idea on what to expect on this farm, but it was a steep learning curve as it so often happens to be when you're making films. Jersey, will you help me move the frame? Oh no, we'll put the cardboard first, yeah. They were putting cardboard down in the dirt and putting soil on top of it before they were planting things. I had never heard about this thing before, so I asked Stephen to explain it to me. So what's the cardboard for? Uh, so we're using a no-dig method. So it's regenerative met method, so we don't break up the soil. We don't want to break up the mycorrhizal or the mycelium network, which is kind of the mushroom pathways, nature's data cable. So by putting cardboard down, it stops weeds coming. And then we put about four inches of organic decomposed food matter on top and that's what we plant into and the cardboard breaks down in a matter of three four months typically you get a greater yield less weeds and creates more biodiversity so cool so why doesn't everybody do this because it's unconventional at the moment yeah it's, it's hard work it's actually easier work the story goes that every saturday people from the community comes to the farm to do planting harvesting and building work together the crops are then used in the happy pear cafe and their product line and their goal is to be 90% self-supported on vegetables. Doing good. You know, it's often said that before you grow veg, you should grow soil. And this is a great way of bringing more nutrition to your soil and more microorganisms. All nutrients come from the soil. The more healthier your soil, the healthier your veg. I have to admit that I was a little bit skeptical to all this talk about community and it all seemed a bit cliche, but somewhere around here, it all started growing on me. So did Harold always live like this? Well, no. Seven years ago, I worked in a gym. I weighed 86 kilos. I was eating what I believed back then to be a very healthy diet. It involved eating a lot of chicken. And when I say a lot of chicken, I mean I carried around in my pocket a little tub of chicken. I drank three protein shakes, whey protein, of course, the only protein. I was convinced that this was the path for the rest of my life. It wasn't until I came across the objective data on the impact of animal agriculture that I started thinking, maybe this isn't worth it. I'm half English, but also half French, so grew up eating an absurd amount of dairy and loved it, to be honest. I then went plant-based seven and a half years ago don't have great memories of the early years because I felt quite alone. I feel like my reasons weren't appreciated, but also I wasn't very good at communicating them. I definitely had a preachy period because I expected everyone else just to see what I saw. I also didn't have the information, so my arguments maybe weren't as crisp. Okay, it's been five days and our buckets of sprouts are ready to be packed and delivered to people's doors. Over the last seven years, I think people have seen the benefits and have grown to respect it. 
When I first met him, I thought, oh, this is just another fad, you know, and he gave me some literature. I started reading about it and realising that, that what he was saying was true. That sprouts really can make you much more healthier. It's not just made up. And uh, for me, that was just something I could really get on board with. On a Saturday, I do the logistical work, sort out what orders are going where, and then I do the deliveries on a Sunday. Basically, yeah, that's it. We'll, we'll find a way to show people that it is effortless to consume one of nature's most nutrient-dense foods and one of nature's most sustainable foods. I think Harold's work at the Sprout Farm is a great example of how small local businesses can contribute to the community that you live in. When Harold told us that he isn't doing this to get rich, that the sole purpose for him is to contribute to the health of his community and, of course, saving the planet, some part of me felt that this is a forgotten way to run a company these days. But I also wanted to know what made him start sprouting in the first place. It wasn't until I started studying culinary medicine that I really understood, wow, the power within these tiny little green hairs <laughs> is insane. And I started sprouting a little bit, which is what you do when you're a single man. Uh, <laughs> single, when you're a single vegan man, sprouting is a really, really normal activity because you have a lot of time to kill. Uh, and sprouts to kill in the early days because you get it wrong, you forget to water them, you overthink the soaking. So when I moved here, I was still the single vegan guy in Ireland, except for now I lived by the beach. I met my now wife outside of a vegetable shop. But I remember thinking, like, God, the, who is this quirky Englishman? And we fell in love. He marketed himself to me very well, let's just say. She's everything to me. She is also part of the reason I started The Sprouts because she knew what I was passionate about and I wanted to show her that, that I was going to continue that passion. So after he was selling it to me, I suddenly realised, OK, yeah, I get why you're selling it to me because, you know, it's a lot of work starting a business, especially something so niche like this, you know? It's, it's not like I'm, I'm going to start a cafe and I'm like, oh yeah, well, I, I know people like coffee, so I know people are going to go to your coffee shop probably. It's like, no, are people going to listen to this like Sprite man who's uh, running around trying to sell you this niche product? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Here they are. And he's going to pay for this as well. Nothing's free in this world. I think it's actually really good. Yeah? So how many do you want to buy? Do you want a whole bucket? Or? Welcome to one of the most fundamental rooms in the house. The seed room. Come on in. Big, beautiful, organic seeds. Ooh. I can't explain how heavy these are and how important it is that there are farmers before us in the world who cultivate seeds. Because without seeds, the planet doesn't move and we should show them a lot more respect. The reason I'm obsessed with sprouts is that they are up to 40 times more micronutrient dense whilst using 90% less water and growing in a fraction of the time. It takes six weeks to grow a full broccoli and it takes five days for broccoli sprouts to be ready to harvest and eat. So I came across growing food indoors at university initially and I was blown away by how efficient it is. When I started talking about this, I think people around me reacted in a similar way to when I went plant-based. Harold's in the weeds again. Harold's worrying about things that don't matter. The idea to turn it into a business occurred during lockdown. I befriended a local farmer who was growing sprouts for businesses, but had lost a lot of the business. I was looking for ways to contribute more to my community, specifically their health. The idea hit me. Why don't we grow specifically broccoli sprouts and why don't we deliver them to people's doors like a milkman? I'm so grateful because you made the Sprouts business real before it was real. By creating us a logo, suddenly it wasn't just this like silly project. It was, it was a website. It was, it was legitimate. And I'm so grateful because I never would have done that. You're welcome. You, we started off with six customers. I delivered them on my bike. In fact, I delivered them on my bike because I was obsessed with it being carbon neutral, up to 30 customers. At that point, it became quite heavy and quite hot in the bag. So reluctantly, we had to switch to a Sproutmobile. 
I went up to her and I said, Sarah, just hypothetically, if I were to take your lovely car that you love very much and just wrap it in green sprouts, how, how, do, you, how do you feel? She'd be like, yeah, go for it. And I was like, only you would just see that as fun and just... You it was hilarious. I was driving a Sprite mobile for like a year until <laughs> oh Harold God, yeah. crashed it. Cut, cut. Where are we now? We're proud to say we have 80 Sproutarians on a weekly basis. We have two drivers helping us get all these people their sprouts. We've come a long way from me on my bike. So how can we take all of these experiences, these words and things that you can do to improve your life and turn it into a way to make impact? I think Harold's way of explaining it makes a lot of sense. I still have a day job and I'm a long way away from being able to throw myself fully into the sprouts, but that's okay. A message to my fellow millennials is we can have impact on the side that is measurable and meaningful, whilst also, of course, the safety of a day job. Let's not let the need to absolutely commit to making huge change stop us from starting and doing something. As long as we're measured and we measure the impact we'd like to have, we can all contribute a little bit and hopefully build a happier, healthier society for, uh, for our kids. What's the next step for fixing the broken food supplement system? Well, firstly, consume sprouts. They are a real food supplement in the, in the absolute form. Beyond this, we have started dehydrating our broccoli sprouts to create real food capsules. And more importantly, showing people how to do that themselves. Anyone can make their own fresh organic supplements. Dehydrator, grinder, capsule machine, it's pretty empowering. The last year has been a very emotional year. I became a dad for the first time. Nothing trumps the, the importance of, of making my son proud. So if I came back from the future, to London and was told that I'd live in a small town outside of Dublin by the beach and I'd sell broccoli sprouts. I would have told you, oh God, where did it go wrong? That would be my initial reaction. But then I would have stopped and hopefully understood that whilst we change a lot as people and that's important fundamentally, it was quite aligned with me. I care about community or feeling loved. That's my carnal desire. I was quite an environmentally conscious person. So once you'd explained to me what broccoli sprouts were, I'd have been like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I'd have been pleasantly surprised after being a little bit concerned at the start. I'm grateful for that question because it makes me grateful that it all turned out okay. Yeah. My dream, very simply, as someone who cares an awful lot about my family's health, my friend's health, my community's health, is for everyone I know and love and care for to wake up and be consuming a trustworthy, traceable, bioavailable supplement that we grow for them with love. So that's the dream. We localise on the one hand, we support our community, we show other communities how to localise, but also the tech guy in me, the bigger picture thinking guy in me wants to make a small positive dent in the supplement space to help people consume transparent health promoting supplements and again in, a, in the same way I want them to live healthier happier lives. Wow so now it's my job to summarize this whole thing. Making this film was so intensely emotional. It made me laugh and cry and really question how I live my life. In a few days, I made a friend for life in Harold. Getting to know him and all of the other people in Greystones has taught me so much. I learned that health comes from the people that you have around you and what you do together. And since I'm someone who is less than fantastic at keeping in touch with friends and family, this was an eye-opener. It made me want to change that. And if Harold can change the world while maintaining a day job, so can I. And you. And I think that is what the world needs. Billions of people all doing a tiny, tiny bit each. 
I hope this helps you see that anything is possible and that you, just as me, got inspired to start thinking about what you really want to do. It doesn't get old, does it? It doesn't get old, exactly, that's it. It doesn't get old. Yeah, yeah that's the perfect to say. Yeah, we've been like every day for years. Yeah. Still. Still keep coming back for more. <laughs> If anybody wants to copy the sprouts or the supplement business idea, I really mean it. Message me, let's have a chat. Do it for your community, do it for your country and take back the power. You don't need to spend loads of money on supplements and you certainly don't need to wait around to reclaim your health from a food point of view. So if you are someone who are looking, well, yes, yeah, who are looking for, we are here in our, and if you are someone who wants to... We are in Ireland and we are here to film a story about broccoli sprouts. This is not what I'm supposed to say right now.